Rich Dad's Cash Flow Quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Samuel and I want to make self-growth normal, but I don't want to do it alone. If you want to make self-growth normal, then make sure to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It helps with SEO and ranking and all this other stuff and I really appreciate it because so much work goes into making these videos. Written by the Rich Dad himself, this book is the follow-up of Robert Kiyosaki's double, mega, triple, monster success in finance, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. If you ask anyone for recommendations in personal finance, that is always going to be one of the first book titles dropped. And this one is very high up there as well. This book lived up to its hype. And it's very ahead of its time because everything is going faster and faster. And our ability to figure out what we truly need to focus on in life can't really seem to keep up with it. And a huge area that we really can't seem to keep up with is finance. The middle class is disappearing, ladies and gentlemen, and look at that face. That man is concerned. He's deeply concerned. And a lot of it with the beginning of the book, he explains has to do with education and how the typical education system is becoming outdated. Then he introduces us to the moment we've all been waiting for, the quadrant. There's E, which stands for employed, S, which stands for self-employed, B, which is business owner, and I, which is investor. I have been in the S category. It's one of the most difficult things I've ever had to do, trying to make it sustainable. I was in the E category as well. I still am. The problem was that the S category just wasn't sustainable. See, I was so blinded by how passionate I was for making music that I didn't realize where the music industry was going. And the more I learned, the more that eventually just really started to catch up with me. So I found a more future-proof version of S. It actually kind of ties into B. I'm pursuing that now. For anyone curious, it's on the screen you're watching at the moment. So there's E, employed, S, self-employed, B, business owner, and I, investor. Part one of this book will help you identify where you are in the quadrant and where you're probably gonna wanna be in five years. Part two will tell you more about what you have to be than what you have to do. Part three explains how to find success on the right side of it because there are two sides. There's the left side, the E and S side, but there's the right side, the B and I side. And what's important about that is that the most financially secure people are the people on the B and I side. And isn't it weird how many people on the B and I side of the quadrant, like the most successful people, like Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, Michael Dell, they didn't finish school. Apparently to be successful in any quadrant, you don't just need technical skills. You need a little bit more than that. You need to know why and how people change quadrants. For S's to evolve into B's, for example, they need to take what they do and turn it into a kind of system. Robert Kiyosaki's take on like economics and investing and the future, it's all really fascinating. He talks about how it's better to learn how to manage risks rather than be afraid of risks. Shifting to the left side with the E's and S's because you're scared of investing is a thing of the industrial age. This is not the industrial age. He says, the reason so many people struggle financially is that every time they make more money, they also increase their two biggest expenses, taxes and interest on debt. He also recommends it's best to go with the B quadrant before going into the I quadrant because it's better to invest in a company when you actually know what like a dope, sustainable, scaling company looks like and how it runs and all that other stuff. Technology is the reason it's now easier than ever to switch into the B quadrant. There's an interesting section on network marketing, which is like a rather easygoing combination of business and investing. That and another on the five different levels of investors. If I can recall correctly, they're the uneducated level, the saving level, the I'm too busy level, the I know everything, do it yourself level, and then the capitalist level. He also talks about the differences between the levels and what to do at whichever level if you want to get to the next one. He says the I quadrant is the most important quadrant for your future. One of the craziest chapters I've ever heard in probably any book from this book is about the difference between seeing money with your eyes and seeing money with your mind. Isn't that insane? I swear, when it comes to money, this book has the answers to the most important questions you never even knew you had. Of course, he talks so much philosophy about investing and how you see yourself, and there's so much, like, this is the type of book that links money with who you are. It's like Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, my favorite book ever. 
in that sense. But in the same sense, it's like the millionaire real estate investor by Gary Keller. It talks about how money and emotion have to kind of separate themselves from each other. Like how the parent in you says you should save money, but the child in you says, oh, whatever, I'll just go on vacation with my credit card. He stresses repeatedly throughout the book this like game of money and lots of things come back repeatedly as, uh, as other examples pertaining to different things it's weird it's like they all connect with each other like the greenhouses and red hotels of monopoly the struggle he and his wife kim went through when starting their education business the left and right sides of the quadrants the act of seeing money with your mind and not your eyes and the like he also talks about things like the rich dad cash flow quadrant there's like a board game that he actually came out with and other people in their experience playing it. It actually sounds really interesting. That and the notion that there are a few like super rich control con families controlling everything in the world. And like there are all these conspiracies and he's like, here's how I really look at it. That's in the book too. If you are trying to get into finance, this book is just the most, it's one of the most essential books out there. I can't recommend it any more strongly than, than any book. <laughs> Other than, you know, if you keep watching, I'll give you a couple of recommendations at the end. Quotes. The reason so many people fail to achieve success is because they failed to fail enough times. Anyone who says money isn't important obviously hasn't been without it for long. Thinking is the hardest work there is. That is why so few people engage in it. It's not the return on investment I'm worried about, it's the return of investment. The difference between a rich person and a poor person is what they do in their spare time. If you want to do your own thing, then do it after you've mastered both systems and people. What you think of me is none of my business. What is most important to me is what I think of myself. One of the great formulas for wealth is found in the game of Monopoly. Always remember the formula. Four greenhouses, one red hotel. Never ask an insurance salesman if you need insurance. Millions of people think saving money is smart. It used to be when money was money. It is hard to learn from one's mistakes when one doesn't know what mistakes were made. The US dollar has lost 95% of its value since 1971. It will not take long for it to lose the rest. Education gives us the power to turn information into meaning. When someone says to you, you can't do that, they may have one finger pointed at you, but three fingers are pointing backward at them. As long as we keep holding hands and no one breaks ranks, everyone will be fine. By the way, the word fine is my acronym for feeling insecure, neurotic, and emotional. You can always quit, so why quit now? Giants always trip and fall, but worms don't because all they do is dig and crawl. For every liability you have, you are someone else's asset. Professionals have coaches, amateurs do not. Many people won't head down the street until all the lights are green. That's why they don't go anywhere. Direction one. I recommend this book to basically everyone. This and Direction Two, I also recommend Rich Dad Poor Dad from the same author and Unshakable by my hero Tony Robbins. Rich Dad's Cash Flow Quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki. There's a link in the description if you guys want to check it out and read the reviews that and all the other books that I mentioned in this video. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review, please let me know in the comments. Also let me know if you checked out this book and you liked it. But hey, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already because I don't know why people watch this far into my videos and they don't subscribe but if you did subscribe and you want to turn it up just a notch and turn on the notification bell to receive a notification every time I drop a new video that would mean the world to me thank you guys so much for watching I really appreciate it you can find me everywhere and I will see you then